Uh, Gulliver, then, the authorities winding up at this stage, the search for survivors. Well, yes, because after three nights in sub-zero temperatures, it's highly unlikely that anybody would have survived. The mayor of Dnipro, Boris Filatov, says he thinks that the real death toll is um, more like for 50. Um, and he also said that it's possible that the reason some of the people who are still missing, there's about 20 people still missing, have not been found, may simply be that their bodies were entirely destroyed in the flames and there's nothing left of them but ash. It's a tragedy that has really shaken Ukrainian society even more than other attacks, I think. I can't remember another single attack on a building far away from the front lines in Ukraine that caused so many deaths. And there are also these individual uh, stories uh, coming out. Um, a woman whose body was found with her husband's body wrapped around her as he was obviously trying to save her. That photograph that you've probably seen of uh, the kitchen with apples on the table as if it was a, a still life almost and a video later emerged of a child celebrating her birthday in that very kitchen not um, not that long ago it's uh, now become clear that the child's father was among the victims uh, of the attack so it's something that has made ukrainians uh, even more angry and uh, yeah really um, really you know shaken the country Gulliver, meanwhile, there are more efforts here in Europe and the US as well to get more weapons, more sophisticated weaponry as well into Ukraine. Yes, and in the context of this attack on Dnipro, Ukraine's determination to get more weapons uh, seems to be all the stronger. That's uh, certainly what the President Volodymyr Zelensky has been saying quite explicitly. And this is a key week. It ends with the Ramstein meeting. This will be the third time that NATO defence ministers have met at the Ramstein Air Base in Germany. That's scheduled for Friday, but meetings have already started. In particular, the uh, Chief of Staff of the Ukrainian Armed forces, Valery Zaluzhny, travelled outside Ukraine for the first time to meet with his US counterpart, Mark Milley, just across the border in Poland. The fact that he undertook this dangerous and long journey shows just how important he considers this face-to-face -face meeting to be. The first face-to-face -face meeting between the two men clearly needed in order to discuss under the utmost secrecy what exactly the weapons uh, that uh, the US would be able to uh, supply to Ukraine might be, how they might get there, and so on. I remind you, the US is still by far the largest supplier of uh, arms to Ukraine. It spent more than $18 billion on weapons uh, for this country. Coming in second, though, interestingly, due to the amount of criticism it's getting, is actually Germany with four, uh, just over $4 billion worth. Gulliver, thanks very much. Gulliver Craig, our correspondent, talking to us there live.